Hi there, a few weeks ago on my RC Model Reviews channel I looked at this core memory. So if this is the sort of thing that interests you, go over to RC Model Reviews. I'll put a link in the description of this video, but I've got some more old tech that I thought I'd show you. And since it's not radio, relate, radio control related, I thought I'd stick it on this, the XJet channel, the more random channel of my channel. So yeah, if you're interested in old computer technology, then sit down, grab a coffee and enjoy because this is a delay line memory and this is what we used to use well not me because i was way too young for this but in the olden days when dinosaurs roamed the earth and i had here this is what they used for memory now this stuff dates back to the 50s and 60s and what you see here is a big coil of wire and the way this worked was quite simple you fed data in to the coil of wire via this little, I think it was, no, which one was it? This one here, I think it is. I think this is the, the, the input one. What that does is, I'll try and get my, I'll get my macro lens and show you some of the details here. Hang on a second. Right, what you can see here is, this is where the end of the wire is. I'll just find something to point with rather than my big blunt finger. Here is the end of the wire. The wire runs through this plastic tubing here and it ends up here. And you'll see there's a couple of little strips here. They're actually little strips of nickel. Um, there's two of them. And one goes on each side of this piece of wire that's in here. And what happens with nickel is when you apply a magnetic field to it, it grows longer or shorter. And so the nickel strips run back, and I'll just pan down a bit here, into this device. And this device here is a um, kind of, I think it's an electromagnet. So when they apply electromagnetism to the nickel strips, which run right through into this mounting plate here, it causes one to grow longer and one to grow shorter because of the different flux, which puts a twist in the wire. So if you can imagine, the wire is twisted like this. And in twisting, it creates a kind of a ripple that runs across the wire. Let me pan out again for you here. Ooh, there we go. Try and get a bit of better shot. Reposition things on the fly because I can't be bothered cutting scenes. But ooh, let's go back out here. Um, yes. Oh man, zoom's a bit touchy. So yes, so that puts a little twist in the wire and the wire runs round and round and round of course. So that twist is a mechanical offset in the wire so it creates a, a wave that propagates round and round and round through this coil of wire until it gets here. Because here's some more of these little, little strips here that run across to the wire just here. So when that twist reaches this, these strips pull and push on this little sensor here or and, and this picks up, I think, now I'm guessing here, this picks up the pulse and feeds it out through these wires before, ultimately, it continues on over here and reaches this sensor, which is just like the one that sent the data. So we've got one transmitter and two sensors. And why have we got two sensors? Well, again, I'm pretty much guessing on this because there's not a lot of information on these things. But what I'm picking is that because we run out of wire here, if we don't sense what is coming along and then re-inject it, we're going to lose our memory. We're only going to get one cycle of memory. And of course, if you wanted to store some data in this loop of, or this coil of wire for any length of time, as it gets to the end, you've got to push it back in to the beginning. So there's a sense here, picks it up. I'm sure that's amplified and fed back into the beginning so that the data doesn't just disappear at the end and go nowhere. It actually gets recycled. So it's a dynamic memory that requires constant refreshing. Some of the early RAM chips are a bit like this. And so this is the simple way it works. Now, Obviously, the amount of data you can fit in this system is determined by the length of the coil of wire and the speed at which the little pulses propagate through the wire coil. Now, I don't think you can do much to change the speed of propagation. That's probably fixed based on the material and the diameter of the wire. But certainly, you can make the coils bigger or smaller to hold more or less data. But there are limits, of course, because as the little pulse travels around the wire, it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker because of friction and gets turned into heat as the wire twists. So you have end up with a very, very small pulse if you make the wire too long. So obviously, I think these things had, you know, tens or hundreds of bits of data, and that's about all they could store. But that was enough for a lot of the early requirements with these computer things. Now, I've got another one here. Put that on the bench and have a look at that as well. And obviously, this one is quite a bit larger. It's got more turns, and the diameter is larger. So it's going to produce a much, or have a much larger storage capacity. But again, we have these little nickel strips here which run across to the wire. And so they basically put a twist in the wire and the twist travels round and round and round and round and round and then ends up over here, I believe. Now, this one doesn't seem, or does it? No, it doesn't seem to have a separate sense. So I guess when the data reaches here, it's then amplified and reprocessed and whacked back into the, 
into the system. So it doesn't have a separate sort of tap on the coil. I don't know why or whether that's important, but hmm, who knows. So this has got a heap of wire in it. There's masses of wire in there. So that would have a much greater data storage capability than the smaller one we looked at. But it uses the same basic principle. Little nickel strips, which when exposed to a magnetic field, uh, basically, well, I think the electromagnets in here, basically put a twist on the wire. And the twist rotates around, 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 around until it gets to the other end. And that's where it's read out. So yeah, really simple stuff. Now, obviously all this stuff's full of transistors and capacitors and resistors. It's old, old school, really is very old school. It gives you an indication of just how long ago these memories were actually used. No integrated circuits on this board. As you can see, this is pretty old and it's got a bit of surface rust on it because it hasn't been stored in ideal conditions. But you can see here's the little electromagnet. There are the little wires that go off to twist the storage wire, the wire that stores the data in the, in the system. And we'll go down to the electronics you can see look at all these old school components isn't that amazing wonderful truly wonderful and on the other side we have that other this will be the sender or the receiver or there'll be one will be the sender one will be the receiver and as you can see the wires run off there electromagnets and again those little nickel strips that run through i'll try and get a, an angle on this if the thing will focus so you can see hopefully come on focus no i think we're a little bit too close for that um maybe on the other side we can get a view of that and uh, oh, try twisting it this way, you can hopefully see that there are indeed two strips that uh, do the twisting of the wire after they pass through the magnetic field. So yeah, there it is. It's actually pretty interesting stuff. If you're old as I am, just thought I'd try and get an even closer look at those little nickel strips that uh, basically twist the wire when the magnetic field in this device is activated. If I can get to the other side, we'll see it's exactly the same thing, but in reverse little nickel strips wrap around the wire and they produce a push-pull motion when the twist reaches the end of the wire which induces a magnetic change in the coil, the pickup coil. So yep, she's all very interesting stuff. And finally here's some of the support logic for that board on these really crusty old circuit boards. There are no integrated circuits anywhere to be seen in that lot. In fact if I tip it up you can probably see that there's just a whole bunch of um, Trying to hold this right, a whole bunch of components hanging from boards there, resistors, and let's have a look what else is there. There's a lot of resistors, there's a few transistors maybe, some diodes, yeah, but there's nothing too flash in there, I can tell you now, compared to modern technology. This is looks like it's out of an Olivetti. Olivetti made a lot of quite sophisticated calculators in early in the digital era. Here we go, Olivetti 1REA, might be able to look that up, and there's the serial number. So yeah, this is uh, pretty cool stuff, and just shows you how far our technology's come since the 19, late 1950s, early 1960s. But I haven't finished yet with delay line memory because here's some more. On this board here, these little coils here, these are actually a delay line, which it's not really so much memory, but it does, it delays the data because this is pretty old tech. These, these ICC are really old tech and sometimes you need it to slow down the data to synchronize the data stream. So, What's happening here, I think, is that we've got data coming in. It's being slowed so that it matches up at the right time and it reaches some of the gates on this board. It's, it's really old tech stuff. If we look around this board, we can see that you know, the density of components is so low on here compared to modern stuff. There's those uh, delay lines there. There's four of them. I don't know why, why there's four. But look at look, old carbon composition resistors, separate transistors, diodes and glass packages, and uh, looks like polyester capacitors there. It's yeah, really an old piece of tech. And of course this is a, uh, looks to be, it's only a two layer board. So if I flip it over, there's the back side. And uh, there's no components on the back side. It's really just a very simple piece of circuit board. Not much to see there, really. But this is what they used to make computers out of back in the good old days. Let's just zoom out of it so you can see that in its entirety. Here we go, when the camera decides it wants to focus again. There you go, another piece of computer history. And no video on computer storage history would be complete without the, the old IBM 8-inch single-sided disk. There we go. Now, how big is that disk? Well, there's a micro SD card. <laughs> and these disks could handle, I think they had 128 K bytes or something. I'll just check and see if this is a hard sectored or soft sectored disk. That's a soft sectored one. The hard sectored disks had a hole for each sector. 
punched into them so when they spun a little light shone through this hole in the envelope there and it was hard sectored so every time the light could pass through it marked the start of a new sector. Later on like this they were soft sectored so it was all done by timing, crystal controlled timing but there you go these were amazing bits of kit for the day. Started off as I say I think with about 128k bytes of storage then they went to double sided which gave them 256 and then they increased the density so eventually you could put 1.2 megabytes I think on these discs but it all started very slowly and worked its way up and this was here we go um, 128 bytes per sector I'm not sure how many sectors it's all be online go onto Wikipedia and have a look if you're, if you're really interested in this old tech it'll all be on Wikipedia and you can uh, enjoy and see how far we've come and thank your lucky stars that you're using the computers that are around today and not these. So there you go, a little history from the lab. And if you want more of these videos, I mean, at the moment, you're not gonna see much flying in next year, are you, for all the reasons we already know about. But if you want some more of these high-tech videos of old gear or even modern stuff, if you want some explanations and stuff, because it's not RC related, I won't put it on RC model reviews, but if you find it interesting, let me know. I've got a heap of stuff lying around here that I can go through and show you what used to be, what is, how it works, all that sort of stuff. Try and sort of keep the content flying on XJet um, in the meantime. So there you go, thank you. Any questions on the bottom? If you used this old tech when you were younger, tell us about it. And if I got it wrong, which is quite possible because I'm old, my memory's failing, and I never used any of this, this delay line memory anyway. So if I've got it wrong, then chime in. Tell people how it actually works, how it really, you know, well, your experiences with the stuff. And as I say, if there's enough interest, I'll do some more. And if you don't like it, if you don't want to watch it, tell me that too, so I'm not wasting my time. Bye for now.